Like someone took a knife, baby, edgy and dull And cut a six-inch valley through the middle of my skull At night I wake up with the sheets soaking wet And a freight train running through the middle of my head And you cool my desire I knew which button to push 
Sometimes music and song can say the things that our hearts want to say, but our brains can't put into words. We hope that Samara is dancing in the sky. We hope her fear and pain have gone away. And we hope that the angels know what they have. Because here on earth, everything is different. And it feels like everything good is missing since she left. Before we move into our service, I feel it's fitting to invite the principal of here at Marist, Greg Sharman, to come forward and to open our time here in short prayer. Today we gather to remember Samara to begin in the culture and tradition of her schools, St. Bridget's Catholic School, Wynyard, and Marist Regional College. We come together in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Loving God, help us to focus on that which enables us to keep going. Remind us that time will never erase the memories we have of Samara and that for a moment we're not alone as we sit here together. We give thanks for the times we had with Samara, both the ups and downs of living life. But most of all, we're grateful for love, which is far stronger than death. Help us to bear our sorrow without bitterness and look forward to slowly, one day at a time, and to gain some comfort from those who can help ease our pain. Be with us now as we encourage and support one another. We ask this in your name. Amen. What moves through us today is a silence. 
a quiet sadness, a longing for one more day, one more word, one more touch. Samara, we may not understand why you left this earth so soon or why you were taken from us before we were ready to say goodbye. But little by little, we begin to remember not just that you have died, but that you lived and that your life gave us memories that are too beautiful to ever forget. Today we farewell a friend, one that we have laughed with, one that we've cried with, one that we have learned from and shared with, one who we are proud to have known. Today we farewell Samara, one that we love. When someone is taken from us as Samara has been in the prime of her life, understandably we are not as comfortable with the words and phrases that point towards a celebration of her life. Immense anger, deep hurt, inconsolable grief, disbelief. These are just a few of the words and the feelings that we feel when we think of Samara now. But hidden in all of that pain and sorrow, there is undeniably something to celebrate. We can celebrate the fact that we have known Samara. Though she is no longer with us, we can celebrate that we were privileged and honoured to have known her. The catastrophe of this death cannot be altered, but it can be transformed by love. We are here to share our grief, so I hope that you will not feel ashamed or embarrassed to do that if it helps you. And perhaps after today you will feel glad that you took the opportunity to do some of your grieving in the presence of others who have known and who have loved Samara, that she was a part of our lives. My name is Simon and along with each of the staff at Parkside Funerals, we have been honoured to have been entrusted with caring for Samara after her death and of holding this service here. As funeral directors, we are invited to the lives of some beautiful families for a few short days to support them and to assist them in the planning of a service such as this. As they say these, their most final of goodbyes to someone that they love. It has been a privilege for me to be invited into that place by Mara's parents, Kim and Seton, and to be able to lead this service today, I am truly honoured to do so. Due to circumstance and distance, I know that there are many people who unfortunately cannot attend here in person today. And so I would like to mention that we are thinking of all of those people that we know who can't be here, as I'm sure that they are taking a few quiet moments to think of all of us and that they are remembering Samara in their own ways. For those of you viewing this service via live stream or perhaps at a later time, I welcome you here today as well. Your presence is equally important. After our service here in the Harkham Centre, we will be taking Samara on her final journey where she will be laid to rest at the Wynyard Lawn Cemetery. Following that, the family warmly invite you to join them at the Wynyard Football Club. This is a time for you to share your support, to share your own memories and stories with her family and with each other. We wish that today was not happening. We wish that the past few weeks had not have happened. For death has visited us and we have been robbed of a precious life, a life that we hoped and that we planned to share for many years to come. And we feel cheated. Because Samara's death was so sudden, we feel such a vast range of emotions. We swing from, from shock to grief, from hurt to anger, from guilt to accusation, from acceptance to judgment, and all over again, from grief to bewilderment. It's important to listen to your feelings. Listening, takes, listening to them takes time, and for some of us, maybe it takes some practice. 
I encourage you, I ask you not to deny yourself this time. It's precious. It's important that you all remember the times that you shared with Samara and reminisce together, share those stories as we are doing today. I encourage you to talk about Samara so that through you, she will live on. Over the next few weeks and months and even years, I encourage you to reach out to Samara's family, her circle of friends, to each other. Check in, make sure everyone's going okay. The support and love, the kindness, the listening ear of a close friend can all help lift this cloud of tragedy that has happened. Her family, her friends, and this community. And if you feel you need help, please don't be afraid to ask for it. A funeral is a celebration of love, of family, and of memories. And now it falls to us to remember Mara, to celebrate her, to honour her, and later, farewell her. And so it's with this thought in our minds that we begin to tell Samara's story. There are a number of people who are speaking today to pay tribute and to start telling the story of Samara's life. I'd like to invite Nat to come forward. Good morning, everyone. It's an honour to be up here today to give you all a brief insight into the beautiful life of Samara. I've sat down with Kim and Seton and the girls this week and the hilarious stories are just endless. This bright, high energy, beautiful girl touched all of our lives in some way and I thank you all for coming out today to celebrate the life of our Mara. Samara was born on a Tuesday, 24th of April, 2007. Mara was two weeks overdue, and after 13 hours and two attempts of an epidural, Kim still thinking to this day it was a painter doing her epidural, their little girl entered the world at 9.50 p.m. A perfect little seven pound, 13 ounce, 50 centimetre long, and a 35.5 flat centimetre flat head. Yes, Mara had a flat head. Kim and Seton fell instantly in love with their bubbly, smiley baby, and four days later thought it was probably time to pick a name. Kim remembers Amy Summers coming over with a list of names, and Sienna was the pick. Then Seton said, what about Samara? And Kim said, yes, that's perfect. But Kim soon put a stop to Seton also picking the middle names as, as Samara Satini and they both settled with Samara Louise. Mara had two older sisters, Tiana and Nikki. However, Mara begged for a little brother or sister, and seven years later, she got her wish and fell in love with Mahalia. And three years later, Kim and Seton were pregnant again, and Mara hoping for a little brother. Let's just all pause for a second and get Mara's thoughts on why she never got her little brother. He's a stupid bitch and he's fat and he has four chins and he's black and he has tiny little balls. That's why he couldn't ever produce a boy and he has all girls because he's a baby. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> okay. And then our Mara met Ava. And Mara took on the mum role, as we all knew her to be. Samara was the apple of her granddad's eye, and she had him wrapped around her little finger. And all throughout her life, and the family find peace in knowing that Samara is now with her granddad. Samara went to Pobblebonk's daycare centre and would scream the place down. And, they had, <laughs> and she would have to be held back so Kim could leave. <clears throat> Samara was three when she started swimming, and all she wanted to do was complete the whole lap. Once she completed that goal, she stopped, because she nailed it. 
Samara started kinder at Somerset Primary, where she hated her teacher and would try and escape. So that's when she moved to St Bridget's. She did try and continue to escape up until grade two. That's when Danielle and Tamika would try and distract her and barricade her so Kim could make a run for it. Samara never wanted to be out of reach of Kim. Samara started gymnastics at Zodiacs at six years old and had to start at level one. This did not impress her at all, as it was far too easy. Six months later, she quit, because YouTube taught it better. Samara had the most incredible hair. Everyone admired it. But at seven years old, she decided she wanted it cut up to her shoulders and demanded Kim take her to the hairdressers. This turned out to not be the best decision. She instantly flipped out and wished for it to be all glued back on. From then on, no one could touch her hair. She went through a phase where she would tie it up with 14, yep, 14 hairbands each day and would go through three cans of hairspray a week. In grade two, Samara tried her hand at netball, but the cold early mornings were not Tamara's liking, so after only one season, she moved on to basketball. As with everything Mara turned her hand to, she was a basketball star and gave it everything. She received the Under 14 Coaches Award in 2019, and Mara, of course, was the team's hairstylist, and also known to manage five fouls per game. With a sneaky headlock and a bite to the opposition's ear, nothing was out of bounds to get that ball. Mara loved her dad's truck. From a young age, every time he pulled up, her sisters and Mara would make the honk honk sound and wait like 45 minutes for Seaton to do his time sheet. This one day she called out, Dad, there's something wrong with your truck. Seaton looked out the window and it was gone, over the bank beside the house with only the grill visible. And after several attempts to recover it, it was time to call in the big guns. After figuring out she was probably a little too aggressive for basketball, she joined a mixed footy team in grade, for grade five St Bridget's. She played five or six, then she played five or six games of under 13s with Wynyard and went straight into training with the under 17s. And Pete Smith said, we'll take her. And a star was born. Mara played in the under 17s grand final at just 13 years old and was awarded best and fairest and best in finals in 2022 and they won the premiership. Mara was known as the pocket rocket. Mara won best on field numerous times and played in multiple Northwest rep games, taking accolades with consecutive best on field in under 14s and 15s. So Mara's love and passion for football was fierce, as was her love for her friends, her kindness and infectious laugh touched everyone. When I look around this room today, I can clearly see how she is absolutely adored by everyone that crossed her path. Samara was known for her love of piercings, thanks to her big sisters. She purchased a piercing gun online and went crazy with it, blinging up her body wherever she could. This girl's pain tolerance was incredible, with the known fact that no one could ever beat her in an arm wrestle. Samara's dog and best friend Barney was the love of her life, and she would always say, if he was human, she would marry him, as he's a true gentleman. Samara was a bit of an entrepreneur, standing out, sorry, starting out selling gumballs for a dollar, then moving on to eyelash extensions, buying a kit online with Kim as her first client, sticking her eyelids together. Seaton was up next. Come here, Dad, I'll clean your lashes. Next minute, he had a lovely set of lashes on, mind you, just one eye. Next up was baking. Mara somehow managed to sell one of her cakes for $50. Brows was another underlying talent of Mara's, with Ava, Granny and Barney being her number one clientele. So Mara was always complimented on how nice her skin tone was. Little did everyone know it was an every second day bottle job with the help of mum and dad to get to those hard to reach places. Kim has such fond memories of the three girls growing up, especially when Mahalia would remind Samara she was adopted as Mahalia believed she was an Indian, as she looked so different to her and Ava. Kim also recalls Samara waiting for her to leave the room. 
Then Mara would set the two girls up as if they were in a boxing ring, <laughs> facing each other, drop the hand, say, fight, and they would fight. She would film them and send it to all of her friends. And I imagine there's a fair few in this room that know exactly what I'm talking about. Samara so purchased her first car last year, way before she got her learners, scoring a $500 price drop for being so beautiful. Kim was at work a few days later and she heard a beep beep. Looking out the window was Mara driving her new car with Granny by her side, with the L plates up, still no license. <laughs> Granny was Mara's Uber. Whenever and wherever she needed it, Granny would pretty much do anything that Mara ever asked of her. Samara's so love for living life to the fullest and giving anything a go was one of her many beautiful qualities that our girl had, including, but not limited to, cutting off her three-day-old plaster cast from her broken foot one Christmas when she received a kayak and she was so determined to get in that water. In 2022, Samara wrote up a resume with the help of Brianna and applied for a job at the Somerset Pharmacy with Brad and his team. She was so nervous when the phone call came for an in-person interview that Kim had to go out and buy a whole new outfit for her to wear to it. As we know, she was successful and super excited to start work as she had a love for money. Mara loved her job and her colleagues immensely, especially when Craig brought her cookies and slices and made sure she always had a lift to and from work. Kim and Samara's relationship went beyond mother and daughter. They both had the same infectious laugh and facetious attitude. Kim has lost not only her daughter, but her best friend. Keaton, Seaton was and super proud of Samara and loved her unconditionally. He's lost his little organisation specialist and budgeting guru. Samara will be greatly and deeply missed by her sisters, Mahala, Mahalia and Ava, who looked up to her as their role model and admired her as their leading light. Tiana and Nikki have lost their little sister and the world has lost a majestic soul. However, the universe has gained a bright shining star. Fly high with, beautiful, with granddad, beautiful girl, and please everyone remember, this is not goodbye to our dear Mara, it's simply see you later. Thanks, Nat. Samara and Bowen have shared a special bond with each other right through childhood and into their adulthood. And so Bowen and Alistair, would you like to come forward now and share your tribute? I met Samara when both 13, just going into high school, and she never really liked me that much. I always thought I was a bit of a weirdo, but um, eventually came around, and I think through COVID, um, started talking a bit, and we used to get on the school team schools a bit and start talking, and then eventually, after a fair while, built up the courage to ask her out, and Thankfully she said yes, but I'm pretty sure she wanted to say no, just felt bad. But, um, well, that's what she used to say anyway. But, um, yeah, since then, um, pretty much found out how kind and caring and funny she was, but as funny and kind and caring she was, she was equally stubborn and competitive. Um, used to always make little competitions like getting more hours on her L's than me or having more money or she used to get pretty worked up about Monopoly if she ever started losing but um yeah um Samara was always the one to look out for everyone else and she was always trying to make people laugh and make sure they were okay but um as much as she'd do it she hated being around too many people. She, she didn't have much of a social battery, thought it got pretty exhausting for her, so 
we ended up doing a fair bit just together and yeah, really built the connection and I remember every every night we'd get home, have tea and then it'd be seven o'clock and I'd get a FaceTime call from Samara and I'd be trying to go to sleep at by 12 but she say she has to stay up because she's done a fake tan and can't wash it off till one o'clock in the morning <laughs> so I'd have to stay up and wait for that but um but yeah um yeah she's pretty funny she used to always like to play um play jokes especially on me and um I wasn't really that smart with all the fake tan and stuff so she used to get me pretty well, and one time she came out, came to mine and said, um, oh, let's get some fake tan and fake tan ya. I was like, oh, I guess so. And then <laughs> she always, she promised me that it would come off if I washed it that night and it would come off. So I thought, oh, yeah, all right. So she did it. We got myself fake tanned, and then I think Kim Rain came round, and she said, oh, what have you done? I thought, oh, Samara's put fake tan on me, but I'm going to wash it off tonight. She goes, it's not going to wash off. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, well, yeah, well, but, um, yeah, I think after three weeks looking orange in the middle of winter, I realised that it wouldn't wash off <laughs> and um, got a fair few looks, but I thought it was pretty funny and Samara thought it was really funny. But, um, yeah. Samara's a bit of a like, a bit of a role model to me. Um, I found myself just trying to improve myself, and whenever I was around her, and she's always trying to make me a better person in every way she could. And um, yeah, she's always trying to prove how tough she was to everyone. She wanted to be the toughest person around and um, I think that's, she used to hide her feelings a fair bit because she's always trying to look out for everyone else's and try to be that, that mother type role model and look after everyone. But um, yeah, but yeah, she always knew how to help. She always had the right words to say and always knew what to do. Um, yeah, um, went through a fair bit together, been through year seven to year 10, 13, around that age, trying to find who you are and grow up, trying to, with everything going on and shit, and so we went through a fair bit together, and, um, but always end up finding each other at the end. And um, she used to always say she felt like we had this weird special connection that wasn't just like girlfriend and boyfriend or mates or anything, it was something else. And yeah, but um, yeah, and Samara, if you're listening, I miss you so much. I'll give anything, just talk to you one more time. But thank you so much for all the time we had together and all the memories we were able to make. Um, I'll always remember you and for the rest of my life, and no matter, no matter what, you always have a special place in my heart and I'll promise to make you proud. Thanks. Some people are blessed with the ability to write beautifully crafted poems. And Piper has written these words for Samara. What makes a friend? It's a simple question with a million not so simple answers. A friend is someone who knows exactly what to say to bring a smile to your face. 
A friend is always there when you need them, offering a hug or words of advice and a reminder that you are not alone. A friend is someone you click with and your time together flies by without either of you noticing. A friend is someone you could talk to for hours or sit there in comfortable silence. A friend knows you inside and out and appreciates all the things that make you unique. A friend is a part of your chosen family and someone you can turn to. My dear Samara, you were all of this to me and more. I truly thought of Mara as a little sister, although she wasn't much younger than me. Mara was part of my chosen family and she will forever be. I will love and cherish every memory that we have had together and hold them close to me for the rest of my life. I will never forget your incredible laugh and your beautiful smile. Samara had the sweetest and most kind soul out of everyone I know and she never had anything negative to say about her friends and family unless it was, what are you wearing or what does your hair look like? <laughs> Samara's love for football was admirable. Although her journey had just begun, holy shit, did she make an impact with her incredible speed and determination to get that ball. She was the most encouraging and loving teammate out there and I will forever be grateful to have played alongside her. Samara, you truly were a rising star. We all miss you deeply and we wish you knew how much you meant to us all here today. I love you forever, little sis. Thank you. Long-time friends of Samara's, Tully, Imogen and Taylor, who along with Samara collectively, known to each other at least, as tits, have prepared some stories and so would you girls like to come together now? Mara, I'll never have the right amount of words to say how much I love you and needed you in my life. So I guess I'll just say thank you. Thank you for the long and deep chats about footy, the company you gave me just knowing you were there, the chats the next morning after parties, giving each other all the details from what we missed, the stupid boy conversations, giving each other advice, even though we probably didn't know ourselves what the best advice was. I've grown up playing footy with you and you for sure have made me better, being my biggest competition, but one of the reasons why I loved it so much. The connection we had on and off the field will be something I'll remember forever. I'll be being at training with you and laughing about stupid stuff and playing alongside you. The under 16 strip early in the year will always be a core memory of mine and I'm sure some of the other girls too. The late night chats with you and Liv when I would sneak into your room, swimming at the beach after games, nearly drowning, getting to represent Tassie together, but most of all blasting music in the minibus and sing our hearts out with the girls. I know you will always be watching over me and I'm so thankful for our beautiful friendship. Love you always, Tay. Mara, not once did the thought of losing you or have to say see you later so soon ever cross my mind. You were so strong. <laughs> Brave and full of joy. I will cherish our happy, sad and funny memories forever and ever. I'll never forget the laughs we had until we couldn't breathe and our bellies hurt. The days would get arsed if we were twins and the times I'd get mistaken for you. Being able to grow up with you and call you my best friend is a blessing. You are so precious and loved, beautiful girl. I just want to say a big thank you for everything you have done for me and letting me be part of your life. Not a day will go by where your contagious laugh won't play in my head. I'm going to miss that. You always have a special spot in my heart, forever and always. I know Granddaddy's looking after you up there. My love, will, my love for you will never end. Rest in peace, Mara. This is from Tully. Never once did I think I'd be standing up here saying goodbye and farewelling you to a place where you'll be forever watching over us all. We celebrate the life of Samara who left an indelible mark on all our hearts. 
Mara Woods cannot explain the love and appreciation I have for you. You supported me in ways no one ever could and you knew exactly what and where I wanted to go in the future. I got messages from you asking if I was okay and you always reassuring me and that's what I'll miss the most. Samara was a bright and loving human who cared for so many of us here today. Her life was full of laughter and she had a laugh no one will ever forget. Samara was an extraordinary person and so was our 12 year friendship. She was not just a best friend to me, but she was family. Between the two of us, she was always the strong one. She stood by my side every second of every day and without fail, she always knew how to comfort me in every way possible. She had a heart of gold and was always willing to lend a helping hand to anyone. We all know she touched so many people's lives in many ways. Samara loved to cook and her go-to was, was to bake a cheesecake. Some of you may know how stingy Samara was with her money and how much she would scam Kim and Seton. If her bank account was 20 bucks away from hitting the hundreds on the dot, either Kim or Seton would receive a message from Samara asking if she could have $20 for lunch. But little did they know it was going straight to her savings. Samara was a gem at everything and I looked up to her every day. Like everyone, she was and always will be every, every like everyone says, she was and always will be everyone's little pocket rocket with her incredible football skills. She had the biggest future ahead of her and I wish she was still here so I could remind her every day. She has so many people that love and care for her that I don't think she realised it. I would do anything to have one last FaceTime call with you so I could update you with everything going on. Samara, you really left a hole in everyone when you left this world, but no memories will ever be forgotten. I will forever hold on to the memories we created and the lessons you taught me. Today we say goodbye to you, but we will always celebrate the beautiful life you lived. Even though my heart aches with grief, I am grateful to call you my best friend. I hope you find peace up there and I know Granddad is holding you tight. I love you always and forever, and I know you will be, I will be with you again one day. You're forever in my heart. Beautiful words. Sisters are often described as your first friends and your first enemies. Tiana and Nikki. Would you like to share your words of tribute? Oh, God. My gorgeous little sis, I'll do anything to hear your voice and give you a big squeeze. Never would I have ever imagined standing up here today. It wasn't always easy for us being a part of a split family. At times things were hard, but we did make it work and we always kept in contact. I was nine years old, turning 10 when you were born, and I was so excited. I loved bathing you, dressing you, changing your nappies, absolutely everything. When people would ask how many siblings I had and how old they were, I would always say, I have four sisters and two brothers, split family, but you were, you, were all, you were 10 years younger than me and I wasn't really sure about the rest. I always knew your age before any other sibling. You sent me a Snapchat college for my 21st birthday, wishing me a happy birthday. Uh, you would have been 11 at the time. This was your exact words. 21 has brought you an even smarter, more beautiful, mature, and more loving, and last but not least, more goofier sister. I'm not really sure what she meant by that. <laughs> and I love you for everything and every part of you. I am so lucky to call you my sister, and I think I'm so cool when I go to school, and I'm like, oh yeah, Tiana is my sister, and Tiana took me here, and Tiana took me there, and. 
Tiana talking there, and oh yeah, it's cool. Everyone just thinks you're you're so cool, and I love you so much, and I hope that one day you will have little squirrels of your own, and hope that they will love you as much as I love you. So happy birthday, sis. You were my late night gym buddy. <laughs> um, every time I would arrive, Dad would be sitting on the couch eating his tea that Mara had cooked him. I would hover over Dad's bowl and say, "Oh, what's this dish, Mara? You would say that you blended this and you done that, just chuck this in and use that. I would snatch Dad's bowl out of his hand and have a mouthful, all six, the poor bloke only get <laughs> the poor bloke sometimes only got left with a couple of mouthfuls left in his bowl. Dad always said how much of a mess Samara would make in the, whilst cooking, then he was left to clean it up. Her response was always, oh well, I cooked it all, you clean it up, then we were off to the gym. I could go on and on about our childhood memories, Christmases, Easter's, birthdays, all those special occasions. I will hold on to their memories and cherish them forever. You are the prettiest girl with such a heart of gold. You never had a bad thing to say about anyone. Your infectious smile and your cute little laugh. I adored how much your eyes would squint when you would smile and you'd do your little giggle. Your mannerism, your happy demeanour and your maturity made me so proud as a big sister. Everyone sitting here today is so proud of you, Mara. You had a major impact on everyone around you and you were loved by so many. As you said to me on my 21st birthday, you hope that I have my own little squirrel one, or squirrels one day and they love me as much as you love me. I hope I have a little girl and I hope that she's exactly like you, Mara, <laughs> because you were so smart, beautiful, talented and so much more. <laughs> Heaven has gained the most gorgeous angel that will watch over, watch over, watch over every single one of us every single day. I love you, Dad, so, so much. And Kim, I love you so much too. <laughs> Nikki and I will promise to be Mahalia and Ava's rock. We will protect them forever, and so will Mara, our angel. <sighs> I just want to say a massive thank you for everyone that has helped Dad, Kim, and our entire family throughout this horrific time. The amount of support has been absolutely just overwhelming. And I would like to say a massive thank you to my partner, Sean, for the past week, throughout the darkest days that I've ever experienced ever. The sleepless nights, being there for a shelter to constantly cry on, and most importantly, the love and support. I appreciate it so much. Lastly, I'm so sorry, Mara. I wish I could have done more for you as a big sister. My heart is absolutely shattered. I will miss picking you up and taking you to school. I loved our morning chats. You would, get in, you would get out of the car, grab your bag out of the back seat, and before closing the door, you'd say, see you, sis, I love you. And I would say, see you, sis, I love you too. I love you, and I miss you, Mara, so much. I don't want to say goodbye. <laughs> it hurts so bad. I wanted to do nothing but protect you forever. So please send me signs, I want them. May you rest peacefully, gorgeous, until we meet again. I've heard over and over this week about the special bond that Samara shared with her parents, Kim and Seton the type of relationship that we all wish we shared with our parents. And so to share some insight into this bond, Kim and Seton, would you come? Mara, my little prophet, you are not just my baby girl. You are my best friend, my greatest achievement, my mini me. You are one in a million. A few weeks ago, Mara and I were talking about Ava and Mahalia and how Mara would describe them. Mara wrote some really sweet things in regards to the girls. When I asked Mara to describe herself now, 
to, she said, no way, that's weird. So I said, Tamara, well, I will. So this is my description I sent to Mara. <sighs> You're passionate, dedicated, and have a kind, loving nature. You are a person who looks up to others. And when you enter a room, everyone takes notice. You are headstrong, but you're kind of shy. You love with all you have, but won't let people get close. You won't show your emotions and you are str as you are strong. You like your time and tolerate things when you need to. You are smart, but don't give yourself credit of how smart you are. You're stunning and beautiful and beautiful inside and out. You will become anything you want to. You have charisma, charm, and your mother is as proud as you more than any other mother could be. You're my girl. And I look at you, honestly, you're the best thing that ever happened to me 16 years ago. I love you unconditionally and you would never know ever how truly much I do. You got it, kiddo. You were also dad's little girl, dad's strength, and that's everything. You would always say, Mum, you're the strongest woman I ever know. But you, my darling girl, made me the strongest. So as I have stood up here today, I know you would be saying, Shit, Mum, you're the best. I love you, our little pocket rocket. Keep kicking those goals. Keep Mahalia and Ava safe. Granddad will look after you. And please, everyone, remember, tomorrow is a new day. It's a new day. I would give anything in this world to have my little girl, to have my best friend to have the one that used to pull my head out my ass and say, don't wear that, don't do this and everything. So I know she's with us and I love you, Mara. And it's not goodbye. It's just see you later. <sighs> Samara shared a close relationship with her cousins, Savannah and Jarman, and they have these words to share. Samara Louise. We have held each other's hands for many years now, not only as cousins, but each, as each other's greatest friends. It was an absolute pleasure to be able to watch you grow, watch you achieve, watch you love, and to watch you live. There's so many things I wanna say, but there are no words to describe the beautiful young woman you are. The way that you loved was something I admired the most. You loved wholeheartedly, unconditionally, and unapologetically. And that love was lucky enough to be shared with everyone who had the pleasure of meeting you. You meant so much to everyone around you, and your soul will forever be pressed upon our hearts for a lifetime. Constantly striving for greatness, and my goodness, you were great. We have taught each other a whole heap during your short 16 years. But sweet girl, if there's one thing I could have given you, 
it would have been the ability to see yourself through the eyes of others. My goodness, you are so loved. Not just by me, but by everyone in this room with us today. But no matter how much I told you I loved you, I always loved you more than that. My heart will forever carry you, my mind will forever think of you, and my body will ever, forever walk with you. The final siren has been blown, the last goal has been kicked. May you rest easy, sweet girl. I'll love you forever. We all know of Samara's great love and ability at playing football. One of the people who have been instrumental in encouraging and coaching Samara, and I'm sure he probably got a bit of it back as well, is Tim Gray. And so Tim, would you come forward? I can still remember, like it was yesterday, meeting Samara back in 2020. She'd been playing under 13s and their season had just wound up. This little knee hydro grasshopper little girl came to training with the youth girls under 17s. And after training, herself and her mum, Kim, made their way over. Samara wanted to train and play some games. So we, we said, yep. She can train, only being 13, you know, we thought, geez, we're gonna have to hide this little girl in a pocket somewhere, being so small. So, first game, seeing Samara, little 13 year old, up against some 17 year olds, which were fairly big. This little, quick little girl had this special talent about her. Little did I know that over the years, I was about to see firsthand how special that talent was. Samara went on to play every game the rest of that season and would go on to play in the first grand final. Fast forward 2021. This is where our coach player relationship began. Samara was easy to coach. She was polite, compassionate, mostly punctual, and always wanted to learn and improve. She was always front and centre, always on me, took everything in, just soaked everything that I could tell her. So her first full year in under-17s, as I just turned 14 year old, I noticed I needed to do some work on her kicking. She could get plenty of the ball all right, but all she could do was kick these torpedoes, which would drop punts, uh, torps. And any, any footballer knows just how hard they are to kick and she was kicking these on a regular basis. <sighs> then there was the issue with the tongue. Samara had always had the tongue hanging out the side of her mouth when she grabbed the ball. I used to say to Samara, put that tongue back in your, in your mouth, you're gonna bite it off. Her reply was, can't help it, Tim. I said, well, thank goodness you wear a mouth guard on game day. Samara's talent started to show on, on game days as she loves to tuck that ball under her arm, tongue out, and try and take the game on. Problem was, being so small and agile, she didn't know when to release the ball. So she was forever getting caught. So with taking her aside numerous times, I told her, if you're gonna run in straight lines, you're gonna get caught every time. So next time when you get the ball, I said you need to zig or you need to zag. And this will get, give you that extra few seconds to release the ball. And that's where the trades mark move started, the sidestep. But over the next couple of years, we need to continue to work, work on it. 
And that's where one of the team's favourite drills was used at training. I used to be out the front. There used to be a group that received the handball. I was out there with a bump bag and they had to get round me and try and kick the goal. And wasn't, and wasn't we competitive. I was slowly picking the girls off one by one, hit them with the bag, and up next was Samara. First time, she got around me with ease. Started jogging past me, a little smirk on her face. <clears throat> and I told her, bet you can't do that again. Which she proceeded to do again. <clears throat> Same thing, jog past, another smirk on her face. I told her, I think I've worked you out. So the next time she come run at me, I had the old feet moving, going left, right, picking which way she was going to go. And then bang, I got her. <laughs> With that cheeky grin on her face, up she pops. I said, yeah, you finally got me. And my word, that was the one and only time that I managed to get her. And I think that's where the little side step finally started to fine tune. Samara had a fantastic year. That year, as a 14 year old, she won the most consistent for the under 17 girls. Um, there was, she won a best on ground in the under 14's gala day that year and played in another grand final. However, she was still searching for that winning one. I took the role on again in 2022, and I really believe that's where Samara's football career really took off. And I was happy to let people know when they wanted to talk football, she was the next best thing to come out of the Northwest Coast. The game went to a new level, but Samara never changed. She just worked harder. She was an inaugural part of the first youth girls under 17 premiership side. She'd finally won one. She also took out the best in Ferris that year as a 15 year old, best in finals, and she also won a best on ground in a North versus South game. And as a coach, I coached all the Northwest Junior Football League rep sides, which she was a part of as well. Another memory I'll never forget with Samara was after our footy dinner that year. I told her not to forget about me when she made the big time as I was moving up into the women's side. And she asked me that when she made the AFLW, would I be her date for the Brownlow? <laughs> when she told me she was debuting for the Devils under 19 side, I flicked her a message, wished her all the best, and I got a message that replied along these lines, thanks Tim, thanks for getting me, thanks for teaching me and getting me this far in football. And I wished her all, wished her all the luck and told her I had my suit ready to go. Samara's football didn't come without injuries. And it was always before some big games. 2021, she asked if she could play in the school gala day that year. Coming up close to finals, I reluctantly said yes. A call from Kim that next day, she'd hurt her knee. Out for the game that week, she never asked again. Early 2022, we were a few players short one game with sickness and injuries and that. So Samara thought she'd go to the gym to do some extra training. Dropped the dumbbell on the big toe, broke it, and once again on crutches. Met her at the, at the game that, that day. I said, kiddo, looks like you need to do some work on your, your little guns. Second semi-final against Alvey. We had to win that to get into the grand final. Playing up forward, she was, uh, she was man in the mark on the kick out and the, the fullback played on, so she chased. And she thought she'd try and smother the ball. Smothered the ball, she copped the boot to the nose, knocked herself out, concussed, 
and taken away an ambulance. But it was lucky we won that game, she could have the week off. So this year, Samara was selected in the Tassie State Under-16 side, which was held in Queensland. And she had a fantastic tournament. What I used to do was, I used to you know, watch the games, whether it be live or, you know, I'd always keep up to date with all these juniors coming through with their football. She was also part of the squad for the NWFL women's rep side, age 16, playing in the second game for the series. She started off, off that year in the youth girls this year, but it was like deja vu all over again. She wanted another challenge, and she wanted to come up and play with the senior women's. To tell you the truth, I think that's, she really missed me. <laughs> Samara debuted against Denport round four. Like I did with all the juniors that was coming through, I took them aside, as I did with Samara, and I told her that they're gonna be bigger, they're gonna be stronger, and they're gonna be quicker. So that once she was used to it, once you got the, the first touch, you'll get used to it and you won't look back. Bugger me. First possession, picks the ball up, tucks the arm under, ball under her arm, tongue out, and, and she was off. It was like she'd uh, been playing women's for years. First game, best player. Samara had that uncanny knack to pop up and kick goals when the team needed the most. The one that pops out was the game, it was Samara's second game with the women's against Alveston, at Alveston. Alveston had three of their guns back from devil's duties this week and was really taken up to us. The side was playing not real good football. It was down by 10 points at three quarter time. So I made three crucial changes. One of them was to get Samara off the wing, putting her across half forward. I told her three quarter time, look dangerous, get in the right spot and see if you can pop up and snag a goal or two. Samara ended the game with three goals in the last quarter. First one was an almighty mongrel. About 30, 30 on a 30 degree angle, sailed through. Second one, she was honestly thought she wasn't going to make the distance, but she was on a limit. There goes the second one through. And the third one, beautiful drop punt. We ended up winning the game by 14 points. After the game, we went straight up to her, put the arm around her, and told her, You're a little bloody superstar, you are. She looked up at me and grinned and said, Thanks, Tim. Samara continued to play that small forward role with the women's, kicking 17 goals for the year and was also a part of that premiership team. Samara had also just started to spend a spot with the Coates Talent League under-19s girls side. Even though things prevented me from finishing coaching this year, I was still act actively involved in Samara's journey right up until grand final day. As I normally do, flicked out a message that morning, wished her all the best. So as Tina and I made the trek to Alveston to watch the game, was walking around the ground to grab a seat, and who did we see? That cheeky little smile and waving flat out at us. Down she came to me, told me where she was playing. Even though I was no longer a coach, I still gave her advice, offering her that reassurance like I always did. Gave her a cheeky little cuddle, and she just looked up at me and said, thanks, Tim. She was always focused and took everything in, as always. <clears throat> she just wanted to improve. Our, conversa <coughs> our conversations would always be, hi, Tim, thanks, Tim, or sorry, Tim. And her little sister, Ava, talks to me the exact same way. Chatting to Kim this week, she told me that Samara had been told she was in the top 22 in the state for the under-19 under side. All, she, all that she could say was, that's pretty cool. 
but that was Samara. Samara was a place of the coach. She was humble. She lived and breathed football. And it's been an honour to be part of her football journey. She was our little pocket rocket. Samara, football will never be the same without you. I'm going to miss you. I'm going to miss that cheeky little smile and that little giggle and that amazing sidestep. Thank you. As we've just heard Samara's talent saw her play and represent her state with the Tassie Devils and teammates Lucy and Candace have a tribute to share. I'm standing up here today to talk about my friendship with Samara and how we connected and formed an unbreakable bond for our love and passion for football, our teammates, but most importantly, the people we became and grew into throughout the years of our friendship. I first met Samara here at Marist when we both signed up for the Year 7 and 8 Football Gala Day. That was the first time I saw her take to the field and the first time I knew she was going to be a star and would achieve anything she set her mind to on or off the field. I've been lucky enough to play football with Samara not only at school but at a state level through the Tasmanian Devils program over the past three years. Samara was known and will continue to be remembered for her kind, caring, funny and outgoing personality. She was one of the most genuine people I have ever met and was always up for a chat. Every time I would walk past Samara's classroom she would be deep in conversation making her classmates laugh or simply walking around the classroom creating conversation with anyone and everyone. However, every time I looked in, she seemed to look back out at me, jump up out of her seat to come to the door for a chat or wave from across the room. But no matter what, she would always have a smile on her face. Over mine and Tamara's years playing together, any time we stepped on the field, whether it be playing with or against each other, it was always a positive experience with nothing but love and giggles. Mara was known for her speed, agility, ability to slip tackles on the field, as well as taking on opponents almost double her size and, of course, her shiny white ribbon. I was in awe when I watched Samara play at senior level for the first time earlier this year, which happened to be against Alberston. Amongst all the chaos on the field, I couldn't help but step back and admire her best on-ground performance, of which she had three goals and most likely well over 30 touches of the footy. The immediate spark she brought to the game got me excited for her future and to see where her football career would take her. The devastation I feel knowing that I will never see what Samara was capable of on or off the field breaks my heart. Whilst my heart breaks, I will always remember Samara as the talented young footballer she was, but more importantly, as the smile that lit up any room, the girl with the most contagious laugh and the kind, genuine, loving person she was. The memories Samara and I created together will always be cherished and every time I step onto the field I'll play for something bigger than just the game. I'll play for you Samara. I love you. And finally, Samara's love for her Wynyard football club family meant the world to her. Abby, Olivia, and Finlay are just a few of her Wynyard Cats family and they have these words of tribute from the club. Our Mara. Our footy team and pharmacy is like a family. A family that will never be the same again. We will miss hearing your contagious giggle and seeing your big bright smile. Your work ethic was better than most of us at the pharmacy. Always the first to put your hand up to cover any extra shifts, especially if it meant earning money and not being at school. You loved your weekend shifts and finding out that most weekends consisted of either a hot chocolate every Sunday from Joe, lots of snacks from Kay, Craig, 
or even a Macca's run where your order was always a vanilla try and sometimes would change it up with hot cakes too. We'll be forever waiting for you to walk through our doors for our Tuesday and Thursday afternoon antics where most days you wouldn't make it through the door without me scaring you. Your next stop before starting your shift would be at the bench for our morning tea leftovers. You love to watch the playful bickering between Michaela and I, but you never took sides, you just laughed at us and said, oh you guys, as you shook your head. We would often forget how young you were as you were mature beyond your years. One of our favorite memories of you was at our work dinner last year. Obviously not the legal age for a drink, but luckily you had a few big sisters around you to look after you. Taking in turns, sneaking up to the bar and bringing you back a drink that was disguised as a Coke or a lemonade, unbeknown to Brad and Joe. Sorry, Kim and Seaton. Although you made a big impact to our workplace, there once was a time where you were forgotten. Discussed and organised the night before for Molly to pick you up for work for only to have her rock up the next morning without you. Alison met, you at the met Molly at the door questioning if she was forgetting something. This wouldn't have happened if her personal taxi, Craig, was around, with Craig always offering to take you to and from work and even carrying your bags to the car. We all know you are his favourite. Your cheeky sense of humour shone one Sunday afternoon at work where you thought it'd be a good idea to find my year 10 school photo on the Myra Smell website and plaster it all around work. For Michaela to soon vandalise, you must have been very busy that day. Some might say I'm a bad influence and to be fair, I was scared to face your mum after our premiership celebrations. Thinking she was going to hunt me down for leading you astray and trying to drag you out of the car when it was time for you to go home. With Mad Monday being the next day, we're dressed in our ugly shit kits that was picked for us by our teammates. You somehow pulled yours off and still looked good. With a few of the girls rushing up, rushing up to you wanting to know the size of your jeans. Sorry girls, but no one could have pulled them off better than our Myra. To me, you weren't just my work colleague and teammate. You were the little sister that I've never had. I'll be forever grateful that our paths crossed. Between footy and work, we weren't far apart, Myra, and I'll hold you with me forever. There is a void that never can be filled. If only, knew you, if only you knew how loved and how many lives you touched. I will love and miss you forever, beautiful girl. I've um, coached Samara and been a part of her football journey over the last three years. In saying that, I first came to know little Samara when she was a little girl through her friendship with my sister, Taylor. The first time I coached Samara was actually her under-12 basketball team. Just like in her football, she was a little goer who always gave 110% on the court. Sometimes the go in her was taken a little too far when she got fouled off most games, sometimes within the second quarter. I soon came to realise that footy was definitely the perfect sport for her. After absolutely dominating her first senior women's match this year, I remember one of the, our team members yelling out in the change rooms, I think we need to give Samara a new nickname, Pocket Rocket. And since then, the name stuck. She was our little Pocket Rocket who was never afraid to take the game on, whether it meant tackling the biggest girl on the field or giving a good old don't argue as she waved around players. There was a drill we used to do at training which involved tackling the tackle bag. The first time we did this, no one took it seriously and were too embarrassed to tackle this bag in front of everyone. Keegan and I were getting so frustrated. Next minute, Samara had her go and, oh my God, I'm glad I wasn't that tackle bag. She took the thing out. She always gave 110% in everything she did. She was the most coachable girl and took everything on board with a grin. I'll forever have those rosy red cheeks and beautiful smile embedded in my mind. Like Abby, my connection with Samara began eight years ago. We met at primary school and I remember her colourful and inventive book week costumes, kitted out with a full face of paint nearly every single year. She embraced the fun side of school and was always active in the playground, 
running around and showing her tricks on the equipment. Through my friendship with her cousin, Savannah, over the coming years, I would see her regularly when we hung out at her granny's house. And this is where I got to know her little sisters, Mahalia and Ava, who I now have the pleasure of working with and supporting at St Bridget's. It was after we formed the Youth Girls footy team at Wynyard that Samara came up through the ranks. And this is where, in my opinion, Samara's star really sparkled. The first time I saw her play, I literally turned to my dad who was coaching at the time and said, far out, Samara is an absolute gun. Because she really was. Her attack on the footy, considering her small size, was fearless. And she displayed ruthless pressure against the opposition. Playing junior footy alongside her was an honour because I was inspired by her focused determination and her first and second efforts. I utterly admired her ability to go hard at every contest. Sometimes it made us all nervous, but she always got back up. As stated previously, a lot of people remember this and I'll never forget our round five senior women's game against Alveston this year. She won us the match by booting three goals in the last quarter. I remember telling her after the game that she had the most second efforts that I'd ever seen. Even when she would get tackled, she would get back up and go every single time. I think all of us just looked at her in awe. Those one percenters were just one of the many strengths to Samara's game. And all of us women loved watching her do this week in, week out. We knew she would give 110%. She had a way of making every match, every miraculous goal, and every moment on the field memorable. Her loyalty to our team and her optimism, even in the face of defeat, were qualities that meant so much to all of us. Thank you, Samara, for making all of us better players and people. Though you may no longer be with us, your memory will forever remain alive in our hearts and in our minds. She wasn't just a teammate to us. Our team is a family, and she wasn't always be our little sister who we love so much. We love our pocket rocket, our two, and most importantly, our beautiful friend and teammate. I think a collective round of applause is warranted for all of our speakers. As our services progress today, I'm sure you've all been looking at the photos that have been scrolling through. As you can see, there are so, so many photos, and Samara's family had such a hard time choosing between them. They have chosen this set of photos for us to watch now, so please, as we pause for a few moments, maybe you would like to use this time to remember your own personal memories of Mara. Time. 
On the drying line Do I remind you of your daddy In his 88 Ford Labrador hanging out the passenger door The sand from your hair Is blowing in my eyes Blame it on the beach Grown men don't cry Do you remember that beat Down basement couch I'd sing you my love songs and you'd tell me about How your mama ran off and pawned her ring I remember, I remember everything A cold shoulder, a closing time You were begging me to stay till the sun rose Strange words come on out of a grown man's mouth When his mind's broke Pictures and past the time You only smile like that when you're drinking I wish I didn't, but I do Remember every moment on the nights with you You're drinking everything to ease your mind feet in the summer heat and birds like hell and two souls me no you'll never be the man that you always swore but I remember you Pictures and passing time You only smile like that when you're drinking I wish I didn't, but I do Remember every moment on the night A rod girl whiskey's gonna ease my mind Beach towel dress on the drying line do I remind you of your daddy in my 88 Ford? The Labrador hanging out the passenger door. And so we have shared and we have remembered just some of the aspects of Samara's life. And we come now to a time where we express our thanks. Firstly, I'd like to thank Kim and Seton, Tiana, Nikki, Mahalia 
and Ava, Mara's family. Thank you for your support and your unconditional love of Samara that shaped her as a young woman, strong and independent. Be proud of the Samara that you raised. Be proud of who she became, as I know you will be. To all of the people who have put pen to paper and prepared and read tributes today, or shared your voice through song, it's a mammoth task, and I thank you for that. To the staff here at Marist for the setting up of this venue, for your support of Samara during her time here, and for your ongoing support of Kim and Seton and Samara's family. I thank you all to all of the students here at Marist. As I walked through the grade 10 common room the other day, I had the privilege of looking at the wall of remembrance that Samara's friends and peers have created there. Some of the words that they had used to describe Samara are beautiful, confident, loved, a hard worker, gorgeous, a contagious laugh, a light up the room smile, our beautiful angel. Jess McGee put it like this, the pain is immeasurable, but so is the love left behind. You were made of the good stuff. And to all of you, thank you. Thank you for being present here today in collective support, remembrance, and celebration of Samara. Thank you for all the acts of kindness, of condolence, for your support of Samara throughout her life. And finally, thank you for accepting and basking in the brightness that Samara has shone into your lives and for reflecting that brightness back to her. And finally, I would like to thank Samara herself. We thank her for being who she was. We thank her for the love of her family and for the love of all the people in her life who became her family. We thank her for her love and her ability at playing football, for being one of the pioneering girls in women's AFL football on the northwest coast and Tasmania as a whole. Samara, thank you for being one of those people who just made you feel good simply by being around you. Thank you, Samara, for everything that you brought into our lives. Thank you for making us, us, who we are. For without your influence, we would not be the people that we are today. Do not judge a biography by its length, nor by the number of its pages. Judge it by the richness of its contents. Sometimes, those unfinished are amongst the most moving. Do not judge a song by its duration, nor by the number of its notes. Judge it by the way it touches and lifts your soul. Sometimes those unfinished are amongst the most beautiful. And when something has enriched your life, when its melody lingers on in your heart, is it unfinished? or is it endless? Ladies and gentlemen, our service here has drawn to its close. As we prepare to leave, I would firstly invite the Grade 10 and the Wynyard Football Club members to form their Guard of Honour up each side. And when we start to move, to start us off in the singing of the Wynyard Club song, the words are in your booklet. You are all welcome to join in. As we move from the Harkham Centre, you are all invited to form another Guard of Honour leading up Maris Drive for, for Samara to pass through as we make our way over to the Wynyard Lawn Cemetery. Peter Douglas will be leading us in this. As we leave, could I invite you all 
to please stand.
Since you 